So you've thought about getting a server rack, but you're not quite crazy enough to make that jump yet. Today I'm gonna to impart the wisdom that I've had on 10 different racks. I've just purchased my 10th rack and I thought, you know what? On this weird anniversary, I'm gonna share a video with the audience about what I've learned along the way of buying racks, building out infrastructure, creating massive home labs, and some of the things that I think you wanna keep an eye out for, a lot of tips, a lot of tricks, and I think, hopefully, I can impart some knowledge to you that will make you feel less insane if you're thinking about getting a home server rack. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is location and some of the things you wanna do if you're planning out a server rack. Before you get the server rack, make sure you have a topo of the area you're planning on putting it. This could be a closet, this could be a room, this is a garage. Some people build custom structures, some people put them in the basement, some people put them upstairs. All of these are valid locations for server racks to be. However, you want to make sure that the area you're working in has adequate spacing for you to be there and also for the servers that you intend to have in it. If you intend to get multiple server racks in particular, definitely make sure that you're able to support multiple thousands of pounds of weight on that location. A garage is pretty typically suited for this. Also, if you have a custom structure, maybe a shed or something that you're gonna insulate and have power ran to, that can work quite well also. If you're thinking of putting something upstairs or downstairs, beware, very hard to move. You need to have a couple of sets of hands. You may need to have some rope if you're going up or downstairs. Definitely don't wanna have a 400 pound server frame crashing down on you. Also, make sure that you fully unload and take apart all of the components of a server rack before you try to move it to whatever location is going to be your end location. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this particular garage. You can check in the video history on this channel. There's tons of videos I've done on things like power delivery, the insulation, all sorts of cool stuff on making sure the heat was mitigated as best as I can. Of course, being in Austin, Texas, it's a little bit hot. But you can see I've got components literally stacked all over the place. And this is why a garage can be a great place for this because I built this workbench a long time ago and man, can it really handle a lot of uh, gear. It makes my life a lot easier as I'm doing things like taking apart, cleaning, checking for trueness, squaring things up and general repairs and just organizing things before they're gonna be moved in or out of server racks. So having a good workspace is a thing that's definitely ideal if you have multiple racks. Even if you have one rack, you're gonna benefit from it. Heck, I would argue a good workbench is just a benefit to everybody. Let's talk about some of the things that I've done in this particular garage to be able to accommodate the racks that I put in here originally. So I built a big segmented wall here, all the way wraparound, with an ingress and egress point on both sides. So one side has a door, the other side does not. One side has raceway above it. The other side, I just kind of retrofitted a attachment later on between the rails of the garage door. And that allowed me to put this closet extension and I can run pretty you know, heavy cables over it and light cables over it and it works out great. But as you can see, I've done a lot of modification to this particular area. I use this actually as one of my monitors, pull it over here have nice seating. So functionality of your workspace is very important. You want to have an idea of what racks you're gonna get before you actually start moving, acquiring, building, doing anything. So definitely start with draw.io. If you don't have that, you can go old school, just get some tape measure, get out there, measure it out, put some graph paper down, cut out little things for your server racks, lay them around, see where things will fit and what things would work. Be careful of knowing where your AC is, where your directionality of your cooling would be coming from, and whether or not that space is insulated or not. You definitely wanna make sure that you have adequate cooling for whatever you intend if you are in a hot environment. If you're in a cold environment, you're not gonna to have to worry about this too much, and you should actually consider what you can do with the excess heat to augment your heating bill in the uh, winter time. Some places it's cold all the time, so that could be actually several months of augmenting your heating expenses with the heat that's generated from your servers. Particularly ideal if you have convection in a basement. I can think of a lot of people that actually do that. Also, keep in mind you want to make sure that you have no neighbors that know about it if possible. That's gonna be very hard because if they see you drive up with a truck loaded with servers and you're making a bunch of clacky rain, like it sounds like this when you're moving them, people will come out and look. 
beware of your HOA. I don't know if that would actually be something that is written into any HOA, but always be careful of things like that. So thousands of pounds makes a garage a very ideal place. Well, I've got mine tarped off here and sealed, like super sealed, so that there is no ingress or egress of air, which if you have a garage, you definitely want to engage in some of that activity because it can get dirty inside here and that adds to your cleaning on the other side versus having a really sealed up area that is not going to get a bunch of dirt and stuff in here. Of course, you've got bugs. I've had snakes in here. So these things can happen. You want to be careful about those things. So definitely it is easy though to move things in through a garage door. So keep that in mind if you're thinking of where to go. Also think of which direction your garage door is facing. Most garage doors, large, metal, perfect radiators of heat. So having an additional spacing that is an airspace between the garage door and the exterior, even if it's an insulated garage door, you can see that giant black tarp back there, that actually adds a great airspace. So hot or cold is gonna stay kind of isolated inside there and not make it inside here. Your standard size 42U rack is gonna fit through most doorways especially even if it's the larger width sizes, if it's a 32 inch door. All of them are gonna clear the top. However, if you looked at something like a 48U, that could be a big problem because you're probably gonna to have to have that tilted to get it underneath there and to work it in. Really could be a big problem. So make sure if you're looking at 48U racks, you really are accounting for that extra height. So you also have options that are things like a smaller 25U, 24U rack. This is a StarTac 25U unit. I bought some additional casters for it that I put on, got those at Harbor Freight for cheap, and it makes this quite a mobile little unit. Now, I would say, do know that you don't have sides on these, and if you wanted to put some sides on, you'd need to kind of come up with something on your own. You're also gonna have an adjustable depth on them, so whether or not you're putting servers or whether you're just putting some network gear, maybe some AV gear, Xbox, who knows, they can accommodate quite a lot, and they are very flexible. These are also very affordable. Even the 42U StarTax are very affordable if you consider what you're probably gonna find for a used price for most of your racks locally is gonna be in the 200-ish dollar price range, and the 42U StarTax are just around that price range usually on places like Amazon. There are also pretty decent alternatives to racks that are available. This is actually a mining rig frame, which is built for GPUs, and this is built for housing up to eight GPUs. Granted, I've made some modifications to mine, so it really just holds four. That video, of course, you can go back and watch on the quad GPU rig construction that I did, but these are 43090s, and that is an AMD Epic, so very enterprise class gear inside here, capable of doing tremendous AI workloads, and this is a really cool, non-traditional kind of rack. You can also stack these high and go vertical with them. As well, there's other very non-conventional ways of using shelving, so don't feel like you have to only use server racks. Server racks are great for density and for management. Server racks can also be kind of a bit of a pain in the butt if you're trying to customize them for anything other than that. They are built for the standard server, and that's pretty much what they're gonna do. If you try to do other things with them, it gets really complicated really fast, and they may not perform exactly like you want. You might be better even considering fabricating something yourself. If you have a rack, if you've got two racks, if you've got three racks or more, you're gonna have a sundry items that need to be utilized, things like big, fat, chunky cables all over the place. So make sure that you have good storage and access places for those so you can store those easily. And also try to keep it clutter-free and remove the stuff that you don't need to a secondary storage location, maybe an attic or something like that. So having a good place to store all of your components also that are small and your tools that you'll frequently need. I have a piece of pegboard that I put back here and this works really good for me to be able to quickly grab something that I need out of here, put it in. If I need a nut or something like that, just grab it, toss it in there really quick. I would really highly recommend that you have easy storage and also some multi-compartment uh, smaller stuff storage, very handy to wherever the front or the back of your racks are. Definitely wanna have a bin probably of just miscellaneous parts. And huge tip here, make sure you ask for everything extra that you can get when you go and pick up a rack. If you're asking locally, if you go to a business, if you go to an individual, they most likely have a ton of components and parts that are gonna cost you a lot of money if you have to go buy them and you're gonna to have to wait versus just asking them. Most likely they've got a bin of stuff and they would be happy to give it to you. This is a garage that I've done a lot of modification to a lot of insulating, a lot of power routing, a lot of modifications, 
building a giant partition and doing insulation inside the walls to specifically fit the racks that I had at the time that I put in here. So those are some things to keep in mind when you're looking at what you would do for your location. Garage, very decent. You do, of course, give up the ability to bring a car into your garage. That can be a deal breaker for a lot of people. As you see here, I've got two new racks, and of course, that's kind of the impetus for this video is the two new racks, which are gonna be much, much better. These are amazing racks, easy to work with. I've had a pair of these before in the past also. I've missed them ever since I got rid of them in 2018. And I replaced them with some racks that were a little bit inferior. And so I want to make sure that if you are thinking about this, you at least know what you're getting into. So these are some Dells. These are 4220s, I believe. These are kind of standard. These were very common in the 2010 to 2014 timeframe. A lot of them out there, very cheap. Probably find them on local marketplaces pretty reasonable. I'm going to move these puppies out and move the new racks in. The new racks have way better cable management in the back. I won't have to do things like create my own rivet mount points here, but also I won't have this cable mess that I've got up above here. A couple things that are going to change is probably have a lot more DAX and a lot less CAT. That's just something that I think is going to be a benefit for my racks in particular. And if you got questions, be sure to drop them below and I'll try to get an answer out for those. Now, if you're going to build something like this, which obviously very well suited for three 42 use, all of the 42 uses are going to be the same height. Most of them are going to be almost exactly the same width. But if you're looking at certain others, they can be wider. These are technically network. These are the APC net shelters. Love these things. Love them. I've got a 3150 here and a 3350 here. One will be used for networking and general purpose compute, the 3150, and the other will be used for its depth, which is really good with the 3350. Very deep, very nice. Another thing to consider if you're getting more than one rack is you have options for how you bay them together. So you can see this has this screw here. This comes apart, this hooks here. Some will have internal baying mechanisms that you screw through to actually tighten them together. That's pretty common that you'll see also. Make sure you check for sides, make sure you check for roofs. Don't compromise on things that are bent, especially for side panels, if the aesthetics of it are something that is important to you. Also check for things like rust. Rust is very important. If you see server racks that have been kept outside, unless it's in a desert, you probably don't wanna get them because it is going to be uh, likely to have internal rust. You also want to check for things like spiders. It's not a bad idea to tip these over, clean out the bottom of it really well, especially if you're bringing it inside your house. You don't want to bring in a bunch of unfriendly guests. Make sure that you check for doors if doors are important to you. If you care about that, that also comes with additional airflow and restrictions. So be mindful that that can actually impact your airflow. For me, I prefer the doors off on the front and the back. That just gives me easy access and it shows all the goodies inside. Makes it look a little bit better also in my opinion. Next thing you want to make sure you check for is grounds. Make sure you've got all the grounds that are attached and make sure that the screws are actually firmly in place and are not stripped out or anything weird like that. I would recommend you get an electrician to do all of your wiring, especially when you get a bigger UPS that is not just going to plug into an outlet or a receptacle. But if it's going to be hardwired, definitely get an electrician to come out. Make sure they bond each rack individually to a common bond. Don't daisy chain your bonds. So those are some tips on the electrical side. I'm not going to get super into it, but there is a whole video that you can go back and check where I talked about this kind of stuff. Definitely get an electrician, follow the codes in your local area. Realize that servers can be loud also. That's why it's important to have cooling. If you have the servers cooled, they're going to be much less angry. Enterprise switches, much harder to control that. So keep that in mind. That's where high quality switching comes into practice and that's not cheap. There's just no way around it. You're gonna spend a pretty penny getting a high performance networking switch that is also quiet. You're gonna need PDUs. And if you've got really good racks, you'll be able to use zero U hangers and your life's gonna be great. And if you're able to use the zero U hangers on your PDUs, there's a good chance they're also gonna be metered and possibly even switched. Switched and metered is excellent. The ones that I use, the CDUs, they're metered and switched so I can actually group uh, outlets and have them all turn off at once and I can control that through a variety of different control interfaces so I don't even have to log in. Very awesome. Most of what you're gonna find out there is gonna be a metered PDU though. That's actually a good thing because you wanna be able to get a really quick estimation 
of what the load is like. Make sure you have your UPS appropriately sized. So for instance, I use an Eaton 11 KVA unit for my UPS. Another thing that you really wanna pay attention to when you're buying or considering buying used is the levelers. These are absolutely critically important. You have to level a server rack very, very level. In a garage, you're gonna have a slope, so you may even need to prop it up with some plate steel underneath it, which is a good idea to raise it up and also to distribute load. In this particular instance, I did make a compromise on this one that has me still concerned, and that is this level layer here has been bent just a little bit. And I knew that when I bought it and I still went ahead and bought it, but if there's one thing to consider that you might actually step away from and say, I don't want to buy your server rack, this right here could be a good reason why. And you don't want to just have them on their casters, free rolling around with electricity plugged into them and thousands of pounds of weight on them. They need to have the levelers extended whenever they are in their final position. And definitely use a laser to get level. To do that, you can just check the U placements that you have. And those U placements, if you put a laser on this, you check on the front, on the side, and on the back. And it should be shooting all the way through. And that way you know you've got a true level. It's also advisable to raise it and check at the lower level and check at the higher level just to make sure that you're true. When you get this loaded up, you definitely don't wanna be doing any adjustments then because it's gonna be pretty impossible. And this guy right here has me concerned because boy, I'll tell you what, gonna be a problem. I'm gonna to have to figure this one out and they're threaded and you definitely wanna check and make sure that the threads are good and that they're not stripped out. These threads are not stripped out at all. It looks like this just got bent at some point in time and moving probably. And if you're buying these things used, a lot of MSPs give these out to employees or something, or the owner of an MSP company will take them and sell them afterwards when they come off lease. And they may not be very careful when they're moving them around, even though they definitely know better. So you could end up with damage like this. This is probably the number one thing to consider that you don't want to have to deal with if you are buying a server rack. And so the things you definitely want to check for when you're looking at server racks and you're buying them used is, do you have any accessories? Is there a powder coating issue where you see it separating? That can actually be pretty sharp, so be careful around that. Is there included nuts on them? Maybe you can ask the person for the bolts. They probably have them also in that big box of stuff. Will they do better on the price? They might. Uh, do they include PDUs? You might be surprised people oftentimes are just gonna give away a PDU with a rack just out the door with it. And you also wanna make sure that they've got the doors, the tops, that the actual frame is square is very important. Do not buy a server rack that is not square. You can take a server rack to a local metal recycler and drop it off. Whether or not they're gonna pay you for it is gonna be up to you and them, but it can be recycled. And also check for rust, mold, dirt, pollen, and the levelers are so important. Make sure you got those levelers and they are fully functional and not stripped out. If they're stripped out, you're gonna have a problem. So those are some tips for getting a good rack and considering the location and taking into account the weight of it and negotiating for all the things that you need and having a good experience with the rack that you are getting. And I hope you have enjoyed this little journey down What About Racks. And if you got questions about What About Racks for me, drop those in the comments below. Hopefully this has answered a few of the questions and given you some really good actionable tips and tricks that you can use to get a better rack set up for yourself. Let me know what your racks are like uh, down below. I'm very interested in that. Also, do want to give a huge shout out to all the channel members. Uh, thanks for joining. As low as $4.99 a month, and you can support the channel and make crazy stuff like this possible. It is really expensive to do this, and it is a lot of fun to do this at the same time, but it does definitely help, and you can also buy me a coffee or become a member on Patreon. Be sure to check out the channel history also. The channel history is probably one of the richest that you're going to find out there around this weird, but still really cool kind of knowledge. Everybody have a great day, and I will check you out next time.